Hi there, it's Asia, and today I'll show you two things you should do to improve your IELTS speaking part two answers. We'll have a look at some sample answers too. Okay, let's get started. In part two, you get a card with a topic and several bullet points. You have one minute to prepare and then two minutes to speak. Today's topic was reported in one of the recent exams. Thank you so much, guys, for sharing your topics on our Telegram channel. Here it is. Describe an occasion when people were smiling. You should say with whom you were, when it happened, why people were smiling, and explain how it made you feel. Now, let me show you some of the common problems with part two answers. I'll try to answer the question and you'll be my examiners, okay? Here it is. Last weekend I went to the opera and all the people were really happy to be there. They talked to each other, laughed and smiled. It was a great event. I went there with my husband. We used to be regulars at the Royal Opera House, but it's been our first event in almost two years. We went there last Saturday in the evening, so we spent the afternoon uh, wandering around central London, uh, had a quick sushi dinner, and went to the theatre for the 7.30 performance. I think uh, people were smiling because they were really happy to be there, the theatre had been closed for over a year because of the Covid outbreak and a number of lockdowns. Finally, it reopened uh, at the beginning of September and after such a long break, it was a real occasion and I was excited and slightly nervous about it, as I guess most people were. What do you think about this answer? It wasn't very convincing, was it? It was a bit boring and the language was quite basic. Uh, the sentences were quite short and they were not really connected to each other. I noticeably struggled to develop ideas and eventually ran out of things to say in just over a minute. This kind of answer is common if you start following the bullet points, like I did. The problem with bullet points is that they ask such basic questions that the answers are short and basic too. And a lot of information I could talk about was left untouched. For example, I didn't even say which opera it was. There are two main ways to improve your task to answers. The first is to practice. Use topics from recent exams. You can find them in our free guide on Telegram. I'll link it below. Take a timer, set it to two minutes and try to talk until your time is up. You don't have to finish your talk. And if you'd like to get feedback on your answers, a place to do that is Cambly. This is an online learning platform where you can practice your English with native speaking teachers and it's a sponsor of today's video. With Cambly, you can choose a teacher you like or book lessons with different teachers and get used to a variety of accents. You can suggest a topic for your lesson or take the IELTS speaking lessons or even a mock speaking test. Lessons start from just 15 minutes a day, twice a week, and you can take them at any time that suits you. At the moment, you can take one 10 minute class for free. And if you like it, Subscribe using the link in the description to get an extra discount. You'll save the most if you take a 12-month plan. And if you change your mind, you can cancel your subscription and get a refund. I encourage you to take your free lesson while it's available. All the links are in the video description box below. And now let's talk about the second way to improve your part two answers. An important point to know here is that you don't have to follow the bullet points. In IELTS writing, you have to describe each bullet point, but not in IELTS speaking. These prompts are simply there to give you some ideas to speak about. 
concentrate on addressing the main question. Find a story and tell it. Uh, let me try again. I'd like to tell you about my recent visit to the Royal Opera House in London. Last Saturday, my husband and I went there to see Verdi's opera called Rigoletto. It was such an occasion. The performance was sold out and the room was absolutely packed. Before the performance began, uh, people were chatting, laughing and smiling at each other. I think they were really happy to be there and to see other people. And in the end, the audience just rose to their feet in a standing ovation. Of course, Rigoletto is an impressive opera, which was masterly performed and totally deserved an ovation. But I think another reason for this atmosphere was the fact that the Royal Opera House had been closed for over a year because of the COVID outbreak and the series of lockdowns we went through. And uh, when I think about it, it was my first theatre outing in almost two years. Although I used to be a regular. I suppose we used to take a lot of things for granted and now we've learned to appreciate them much more. And this is the reason why people were more smiley than usual at the performance, despite a certain anxiety that I'm sure many felt in such a crowded room. For me personally, it felt like a big occasion I was excited and slightly nervous about. I hope we'll all be able to freely attend events again in the near future. This answer was much closer to two minutes, which is already a good thing. Now let's have a look at the bullet points again. Without trying, I actually covered all of them. With whom I went there, when, why people were smiling, and how it made me feel. The answer itself was easier to follow, wasn't it? That's because when you tell a story, you usually link ideas naturally. But adding a few linking words never hurts. So here they are. And because I was telling a story, it was easier to talk without effort, which is needed for a high fluency score. My vocabulary was more complex too. I used a number of collocations or words which are commonly used together by native speakers, such as to deserve an ovation, to attend an event, or to take things for granted. And I used many more grammatical structures and different verb tenses. I mainly talked in the past simple, but I also used used to to talk about things I don't do anymore. Uh, there is also the past perfect and past continuous tenses. And I used the present simple and perfect to describe my thoughts and the future tense to wrap up the story. Plus, there was a number of complex sentences and the passive voice. The last criterion examiners use is your pronunciation. Just to confirm, this is how you pronounce words and sounds, your rhythm and intonation. An accent is not a problem. These are all the things that examiners assess. All in all, it was a much better answer. To improve your part two answers, you should practice answering topics, and you can use topics from recent exams, and concentrate on telling the story rather than following the bullet points from the task. Speaking about accents and exams, I actually have a video with a mock speaking exam where the candidate's accent is quite noticeable, but nevertheless, a real IELTS examiner awarded him band nine for his pronunciation. You can watch this video right here. And don't forget to download the recent IELTS writing and speaking topics for your practice on our Telegram channel and check out Cambly to practice your English with native speaking teachers. Thank you so much for watching me today. Good luck with your preparation and your exam.